1999 is the formation of a six-member drum and bugle corps that was initiated by a student named George Dyke. A couple of years later, a gift from Board of Trustees member, then member Andrew Carnegie, made possible the formation of a brass band in the summer of 1901. By 1913, the organization was known as the College Band, and the first permanent director of bands, Wilfred O. Tommy Thompson, was appointed in 1914. So how did the Blue Band get its name? Well, back in 1923, a few new blue uniforms were purchased towards replacement of the brown military-style uniforms that the Blue Band used, and based on ability and rank, the top members got those blue uniforms, and even we have photos from 1924 that show a select group of blue uniform members in a Block S formation, surrounded by a large number of brown uniform blue man members. The select group became known as the Blue Man and represented Penn State as the official traveling band. And during the succeeding eras under Hummel Fishburne, James W. Dunlop, Ned C. Deal, and our current director, Dr. Richard Mundy, the name Penn State Blue Band was kept, even though all the members now are uniformed in blue. One of our first elements you'll see tonight is our traditional pregame, which includes the trademark Floating Lions Drill, which was created by then assistant director Ned Deal. The band performed the now iconic pregame show for the first time back in 1965 in Pittsburgh. The drill has since been updated by current director Dr. Richard Bundy to accommodate the band's growing size. And folks, that size, 306 members of the Penn State Blue Band. Some highlights of our history, the Blue Band moved into a permanent home in 2004, the first ever for such our great organization. The Blue Band building is located at the corner of Services Road near the intersection of uh, University Drive Extension, northeast part of the campus. And um, another big part of history in 2005, the Blue Band was awarded the prestigious Suttler Trophy, a national recognition administered by the John Philip Sousa Foundation. The Blue Band became the first college marching band to perform at a major fashion show back in 2005 when Mark Jacobs had us on the catwalk during Fashion Week in New York City. Also, the Blue Band has performed in 40 bowl games, including multiple appearances in the Rose, Orange, Cotton, Sugar, Fiesta, Outback, Alamo, Capital One, and Citrus Bowls, along with the Blockbuster and Holiday Bowls. And the Blue Man has performed for the Buffalo Bills on Monday Night Football. In fact, we're going to Buffalo in a couple of weeks to perform at a Bills game. In addition, the Blue Man also marched in the 1987 Bicentennial Constitution Celebration Parade in Philadelphia, as well as many other great performances. As we said, 306 current members, and we'll break that down for you here in just a little bit, comprise this 2013 edition of the Penn State Blue Band. The Blue Band is co-sponsored by the School of Music, which is part of Penn State's College of Arts and Architecture, and also by Penn State Intercollegiate Athletics. The Penn State Bands program not only includes the Blue Band, but also the Symphonic Band, and also other concert bands, and athletic bands that perform not only at football games, but also at men, uh, women's volleyball games, men's and women's basketball games, and now the newest sport in Penn State, men's and women's hockey in the new Pagula Arena, which is fantastic. You guys need to get up there and see the Pagula Ice Arena. It's going to be an amazing situation oh, for hockey side. over the next many years. On a football Saturday, it's a busy day for the Blue Band. They arrive at the practice field some six hours before kickoff. They usually have a run through practice. Then we head over to the Bryce Jordan Center for Tailgate, which is a concert that highlights the Blue Band, also our cheerleaders and our Penn State dance team. We also use Tailgate as kind of a final run through performance to get the Blue Band ready and focused for the upcoming day, which will be certainly a long one for a football game, including a pregame performance that you'll see here in just a few moments, and a halftime performance. Now, the bands here, the high school bands, perfect one show all season long. The Blue Band, 
because it's more of a show band and we need to entertain folks to do a different halftime show for every home football game. And so this halftime show is one that we will see not only tonight, we'll be traveling it next week to Ohio State when the Nittany Lions take on the Buckeyes in Columbus. The Blue Band is headed there. We'll then return home and perform it at the Penn State-Illinois game on November 2nd. And then coming up the day after, we'll be heading to Buffalo to play at the Bills game, as I said. So we'll be performing this show, uh, this halftime show that we'll be performing in just a little bit uh, over the next several weeks. This is the first performance. So you guys here tonight get the sneak preview of this halftime show that's coming up a little bit later. Took six buses to get us down here, and that's uh, actually pretty typical. We can usually do seven or eight buses on many trips with also a big equipment truck, so it's always a fun time to travel the Blue Band, and we are so glad to be here. Also want to remind you that uh, one of the highlights of our year is our Bandorama concert, which is coming up on Friday, November 15th. That's the night before the Purdue game. You get to see the Blue Band up close and personal in Eisenhower Auditorium. If you'd like to go to uh, Bandorama, still great seats left, you can call 1-800-ARTS-TICKS or go to the uh, Blue Band, uh, the box office at Eisenhower Auditorium. There's a discount option offered for groups of 15 or more. So if you've got a group of 15 or more, you can contact 1-800-ARTS-TICKS and get that uh, group situation ready. Again, it's an amazing concert. The entire Blue Band on stage in Eisenhower Auditorium and uh, also all of our band fronts are ready to go.